This isn't really a, a great demo of what people are actually using virtual machines for, but it's still fun. So I'm going to show it to you. I call these stupid virtual PC tricks. So I mentioned that we're working right now on this thing called Windows 7. That's the code name for it, by the way. Some really creative person came up with the code name, Windows 7. Does anyone know why it's Windows 7? Well, Vista was number six. And number five was XP. And number four was NT4. Number three, you have to go back to a previous kernel. Some of you are probably even too young to remember Windows 3, Windows 3.1. 3.5, yeah, 3.5 was the first NT version of the kernel, the first modern kernel that was incorporated in Windows. This is Win, uh, Windows NT4, which some of you might remember, and it's running in a virtual machine. And you can see it has some of the same feel of today's operating system, but uh, um, it's running in a virtual machine. And for those of you who have used products, uh, virtual PC or VMware or other similar products, you know that you can very quickly save the state of a virtual machine to disk and reload it back from the point where it, it stopped. So that's a pretty cool trick. So this is Windows 3.1.1, which some of you may remember, probably not fondly. It happens to have an application installed on it <laughs> that some of you may have heard of. Uh, it wants me to make a backup. So that, that was not necessarily Microsoft's proudest moment there. Uh, but uh, Windows 3 was really the third rev of Windows. And a lot of people don't realize that. There were actually two versions of Windows before that that were not big successes. It takes a while to, to change a paradigm or to, to get people onto a new platform. And so I actually have Windows 2 here. Now, that was the BIOS booting. You can see how fast it booted. That's Windows 2. And you can see it came with some nice little utility, utilities like calculator. Oops. So there's the calculator functionality. Uh, you can start Notepad, Paint. Looks just like Photoshop, huh? So that's that was Windows 2. I actually have Windows 1 here also. Uh, this one, you can watch how fast this one boots. So nice and fast. This one is hard to navigate in because it doesn't know about arrow keys. Arrow keys weren't on the keyboards at the time. It also doesn't know about mice. So you basically have to type select. So like I'll hit P to get the paint. So there's the. So that was Windows 1.0. So let me uh, fast forward to the future, and I'll show you something that we did recently. This is uh, the core of Windows 7. This is a collection of components that we've taken out. A lot of people think of Windows as this really large bloated operating system. And that's maybe a fair characterization, I have to admit. It is large. It contains a lot of stuff in it. Uh, but at its core, the kernel and the, the components that make up the very core of the operating system actually is pretty streamlined. Uh, it's still bigger than I'd like it to be. But we've taken a shot uh, recently at really stripping out all of the layers above and making, making sure that we had a clean architectural layer there. And uh, we created what we call MinWin. Now, this is an internal only. You won't see us productizing this, but you could imagine this being used as the basis for, for products in the future. Uh, this is the Windows 7 source code base. And uh, it's about 25 megs on disk. You compare that to the 4 gigs on disk that the full Windows Vista takes up. We don't have a graphics subsystem other than text in this particular build. So you can see that's our, our Windows flag. Uh, this is running in 40 megs of memory. So you know, a lot less than your, your two gig machine that you're used to. And what it has is a very simple, uh, has a very simple HTTP server running inside of it. 
So if this works, I should be able to talk to it. And so you can see uh, the HTTP server is, is not very full featured. It's designed to just spit out the task list. And you can see there's a very, very small number of tasks running on there. There's a total list of the files that make up the system. There's about 100 files total. Compare that to about the 5,000 files that make up all of Windows. And then here's the memory statistics. So I have it configured to run with just under 40 megs of memory, and there's seven megs free. So, so that's kind of proof that, that there is actually a pretty nice little core inside of uh, inside of Windows. Yeah, question. Yeah, the question is, is MinWin a good way to run web servers? You'd need a lot more than MinWin to run a full featured web server. You know, most web servers today serve up dynamic content. Uh, you, you need a lot more than this. Uh, we, do, we are starting on this path uh, at multiple layers of the system. So Windows Server 2008 is based on this thing called Windows, Windows Server Core. And it's, uh, it basically ships in this minimal state. And when I say minimal, it's, it's about a gig and a half on disk, which is still a lot bigger than what we're talking about with MinWin. But it has all the stuff necessary to run the different server workloads. And so then you can install a web server, or you can install the virtualization role, or you can install the, the uh, database role. And then it adds just the components necessary for that role. And so it keeps the footprint down. Uh, I mentioned gig and a half on disk. That's still pretty big. In memory, it's much smaller. So that contains all the drivers, and many of which you don't need for any given platform. So yeah, we're going down that approach, but it'll be a while before you could build something directly on top of this really tiny core. Like I said, we don't have any any uh, productization plans. It's more of an internal. Like I said, we don't have any productization plans for it. We're definitely going to be using this internally to build all of the products that are based on Windows. We build a lot of products based on this kernel. Uh, it's not just the, the operating system that's running on many of the laptops in the room. It's also the OS that we use for Media Center uh, that's running in a lot of, a lot of people's um, living rooms. It's used for servers. It's used for uh, smaller embedded devices. It's used in a lot of different ways. And this will provide us the ability to move into even more areas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's open it up for questions. I'm done with my presentation.